Life as a high scholar was the most challenging period in Amanda's life. In her mid-teen, she was still bedwetting, and this misfortune brought along a tone of humiliation from her friends. At home, Amanda was the firstborn, and she had four siblings. Of all the siblings, it was only her who was wetting her bed, and she had to sleep in diapers every day. To avoid her lose face to her siblings, Amanda's parents decided to take her to a boarding school for her high school studies, in the hope that a change in the environment would help their daughter overcome the problem. As a freshman, Amanda was allocated the biggest dormitory in school. The room hosted over 100 girls, and most of them were her classmates. She was assigned the top bed and a bunk bed, and below her slept a girl called Sydney. On her first night, Amanda decided to believe in herself that she would not wet her bed that day, and so she didn't use the diapers that night. Later in the night, Amanda was awoken by shouts of insults that were being hurled at her by Sydney. She woke up only to find all the other girls jeering at her and Sydney's pajamas wet all over. The worst had happened. A cloud of shame encompassed Amanda, and words dried on her lips. In her heart, she felt torn apart, and she cursed the idea of sleeping with no diapers. She tried to apologize to Sydney, but Sydney was not the understanding type. She hurled insults at Amanda, thus expelling all her self-esteem. Amanda was fighting hard to hold her tears, but she eventually broke down, and everyone in the room laughed at her. Her first day in school had started on the wrong foot. From that day onwards, Amanda's life at school was akin to living in hell. She was always the laughing stock, especially after her roommates found out that her mom had packed her several diapers as she left home. Sydney was their cheerleader, and she excelled at teasing and humiliating Amanda every now and then. She always made sure that Amanda was the topic of discussion every day, even if it meant making sure that the whole dormitory watched Amanda as she went to dispose of the diapers. In almost any high school, nothing spreads faster than gossip. After a few days, every girl in school knew about Amanda, and they nicknamed her the irrigation technician. What made the situation worse for Amanda was that in the whole school, she was the only one with the bedwetting problem. She had no one to console her, and so she had to fight her battles alone. Her case was considered as infectious by her schoolmates, and so no one wanted to be friends with her. Sydney used her influential status, as a girl from a very wealthy family, to make sure Amanda was ever miserable. More often than not, Amanda had toyed with the idea of quitting school, but she being the firstborn in her family, how could she explain to her siblings that she quit school because of bedwetting? She had to act strong, if not for herself, then for her siblings. Has life ever thrown you into a turmoil, whereby after several series of trauma, you lose your bubbly nature and become a pale shadow of your former self? You become confined in your own cell, and nothing cheers you up anymore like they used to? That is precisely what happened to Amanda. She lost her youthful vigor, and most of the time, she would spend her time in the library. All her bitterness was directed to her studies, and she became a top-notch student. Eventually, Amanda completed high school, and she joined the university to study medicine. By now, her bedwetting problem had ceased. Several years later, Sydney's kid got sick, and he was in a very critical condition. She took her to the hospital, but all the doctors seemed to be a little busy. As Sydney sat there wondering what to do, she noticed a smartly dressed female doctor talking on the phone as she watched the sunset. Sydney went to her and stood behind her to allow her complete the call. When the call was over, Sydney patted her on the shoulder. The doctor turned to her, and Sydney told her about her kid. The doctor swung into action, and within a few hours, the kid was doing well. Sydney was overjoyed, and she hugged the doctor as a thank you sign. At this point, the doctor asked her, Don't you remember me, Sydney? Sydney gave the doctor a deep stare but she could not trace her in her memories. Smiling softly, the doctor said to her, back in the days, irrigation technician was the nickname that you guys gave me. Sydney almost fainted from shock. She couldn't believe that the girl she had used all her energies to humiliate back in high school was now her son's savior. With tears of shame running down her face, Sydney asked Amanda, why did you come through for me despite all the miseries I brought to you back in high school? 
Smiling, Amanda told her, Would it be fair for me to let your son suffer, simply because you chose to make my high school life miserable? What would I gain from that? And if I did that, would that not show that I'm still leaving in your prison? Well, Sydney, my principle in life is simple, always repay evil with good, and never treat anyone in a manner you wouldn't want to be treated. Back then, I didn't have control over my situation, but right now, I choose to do the right thing. I can live with the memories of how badly you treated me, but I can't allow your son to live with the memories of what a bad doctor I was to him. Before the conversation could go further, the phone rang, and Amanda left to attend to some patients. 